Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon Luke 12, 35-48 Verses 35-37 Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning, and you yourselves like unto men that wait for their master, when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, shall find watching, verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself, and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. This is a wonderful passage. Christ has already had one turn as a servitor. He was master and lord, yet he washed his disciples' feet. But he says that if we are watchful and faithful, if we truly serve him, the day shall come when, in all his robes of glory, he shall gird himself and serve us. 38 to 40. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this snow, that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched, and not have suffered his house to be broken into. Be you therefore ready also, for the Son of Man comes at an hour when you think not. This is a warning to Christ's own people, but it is still more a warning to those who do not know him. Suppose he were to come tonight, where would you be, you who have? up to now, lived as if you were your own masters and were by no means the servants of Christ. Take heed unto yourselves, for you know not when your Lord shall come. 41-44 Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speak, then, this parable unto us, or even to all. And the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his master shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he has. What rewards Christ has in store for his people? If we will but be his servants, now, and the servants of our brothers and sisters, he will make us rulers over all that he has. I cannot attempt to explain all that these words mean, but I bless the Lord that they are absolutely true. 45, 46. But and if that servant says in his heart, My master delays his coming, and shall begin to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink, and to be drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he looks not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Again let me say that I cannot attempt to explain all that these words mean, but, oh, what will be the horror, the terror, of the punishment which will fall upon the unfaithful steward, the minister who is untrue to his holy calling, the professor who says that he is a child of God and a steward of Christ, and yet is unfaithful to his trust. I will read our Lord's words again. You know how we are sometimes accused of saying things too dreadful about the wrath of God in the world to come, but, beloved, we never say anything dreadful enough. If you will carefully examine the word of God, you will find their expressions such as even Dante or the medieval preachers, with all the horrors they depicted, never surpassed. We cannot exaggerate the awful depth of meaning which we find in the words of the loving Christ, himself. Let me read this verse again. The master of that servant will come on a day when he looks not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. 47, 48. And that servant, 
which knew his Lord's will, and did not prepare himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not, and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomever much is given, of him shall be much required and to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. Judge you, then, brothers and sisters, how much of ability and talent your Lord has entrusted to you, and be not content to have rendered him some service, but look for proportionate service and humble yourselves in his presence if your service is not in proportion to the opportunities entrusted to you. Who among us can refrain from humbling himself before God when he thinks of this?